From the floor of the CME Group, this is Danny Riley with today's S&P Intraday Update. The name of today's video is the S&P 500, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I want to remind everyone that these are not our father's markets or charts, and in no way, shape, or form are you guaranteed to make one penny doing this. Let's start with the good. It's a very different week than it started out as the stocks extended their rally today. All three averages are higher on the week and aiming for their fourth consecutive weekly gain in five weeks. After being down more than 1,300 points in the Dow, the Dow is now up over 1,350 points in the last four days. It's the Dow's best four days in the last four months. As for the S&P 500 futures, we're at a new all-time high and we hit, our, hit my level at 4,400 that I've been talking about for quite a while. The ES is up 101% from its March lows and up 557% from its credit crisis lows. The new highs are being set all over the place. Yesterday, six of the S&P components all made new highs, while three Dow components made new highs. McDonald's, Nike, Honeywell, Costco, and Eli Lilly are all making new highs. As for the bad, we have narrowing breadth in the stock market right now. With the S&P near or on its record highs, we have the lowest percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving average since 1999. That doesn't necessarily mean that things are heading for a crash. I know that everybody always wants to sell the S&P, but many individual stocks have looked like they've been correcting for months, not days. I think if we start to lose leadership in the, in the tech area, whining breath is going to be something that you're going to want to keep an eye on. Now, for the ugly. COVID is making a big comeback. The Delta variant is now the most infectious respiratory virus ever seen by scientists. People infected with the virus can carry up to 1,000 times the virus, virus load in their nasal passage than the affected with the original strain. The Delta variant now accounts for more than 83% of all cases in the United States. The new cases are up 53% since July 3rd, and the seven-day average has jumped higher along with hospitalizations, which are now around 32%. Three states with the lowest vaccine rates are Florida, Texas, and Missouri which account, now account for more than 40% of all the new cases. Today, the NFL came out warning that it's going to hold teams accountable for those players that are not vaccinated. And we're seeing mask updates make a comeback in many parts of the country. There's a chance that the country doesn't respond to COVID with the lockdowns this time. But if the cases pick up, it's going to weigh heavily on the economy and it's going to weigh heavily on the stock market also. The ugly may not be here yet, but stalling vaccine rates in the United States and climbing case counts could be a big negative for the stock market and the S&P in the second half of the year. So what does all this mean? It's hard to be a trend fighter, especially when the Fed is pumping up so much liquidity into the system. However, it's hard to ignore some of the, these risks. Today, the S&P finally made its objective that I've been looking for at 4,400 and possibly going to move higher. But we have to at least keep the risk in the back of our heads. On Thursday, we saw big program trades going through, going short all day long throughout a rising tape. Did they know that the MIM was going to show $5 billion to sell? It gave us a nice dip into the 330 time zone, but then it helped trigger a short squeeze into the close. As we navigate through another summer Friday and hover above or near the highs, we want to keep all these shenanigans in mind. And don't be afraid to check out our chat room, where the MIM gives us insight each day, as does Spygate. You know, they say the traders that trade in the futures, that only, not, only 5% of the people that trade these futures make money. I believe that only 1% actually make money. It's gotten harder and harder every day with the increased volume in HFT and, and program trading. I believe that being together in a forum with other like-minded traders is only going to be a big help. 
I want to thank everybody, and we'll see you on the next video.